Hey guys, this is Slim for GP Custom Fabrications, and I know it's been a long time since I posted any videos, so at least a month. Uh, and I guess just mainly because I've been just really focused on trying to get the truck done. Uh, it was take, it's been taking longer. I've not had as much time to work on it as I I had planned, but uh, so a lot of stuff has been missed as far as what I've done. But I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, number one. Ended up not having any room for the radiator up in the front, so I ended up having to move it to the back or behind the cab. You can see it there. Got electric fan, it in there, and uh, I talked to Andy about the uh, the mixer body. I went and looked at it. It should fit over where it's at. Worst case, it needs to get moved a little bit. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I I have yet to to plumb the run the pipes back to it. That's going to be my next task. But I've got a couple of issues that I got to sort out still. The this fender is hanging down a lot lower than I think it's supposed to, and where my turbo, where the turbo's at, uh, I need to trim it some more. But I don't want to trim it until I get this up where it needs to be. I think it needs to come up about three inches. So I'll be cutting that loose while moving it up, rewelding it to get that fender in the right spot. I got finally got the front of it lined out. Got the Bumper mounted on, solid. Took a lot to get the front end all sorted out. Uh, I have the, can't see it, up in there is the transmission cooler. I don't have a fan on it, don't know if we're gonna need one or not uh, for what duty this truck's gonna see. But yeah, there it is in there. You can see my intercooler delete pipe. Got it sorted out, got it welded on. Uh, got the wiring sorted. Uh, at least out here, everything's good to go. Brake booster looks good. All the steering looks good. Uh, I do have to, like I said, plumb to the radiator in the back, which means I'll be having to go into that and the one down below and run it back here. To those fittings, which I was thinking it was three inch, but it looks like it may only be two inch. So I may have some pipe for that. Andy went ahead and got me a piece of Diamond plate for the floor, which I need to secure down. Uh, left to do yet is clean up the wiring on the inside, secure the fuse block. Once I secure the fuse block, then sorting out the wires, the rest of the wires will be easier. I need a clip. There's a clip that holds the master cylinder. Uh, I, I need to get that clip on there. Then I've got things like this, this panel right here needs to come out and be modified welded up uh, gas pedal I've got it mounted which it was part of that hanger thing but it's too short I'm gonna have to come up with a longer throttle cable for it I've got parking brake on and working uh, I need to wire over to the switch here for it uh, but yeah let's See, now if I turn it on, we got all of our check engine light, generator light. Uh, one issue I'm having right now is this is the fuel cutoff and it's not opening up on its own. Let's see here. And that's been a lot of work. Uh, seems like even the smallest of things. I know I spent a couple days just getting these fenders lined out, getting them where they're supposed to be, just to find out that the backs are hanging down too low. Uh, just things like when I was troubleshooting, trying to figure out why the truck wouldn't start, I uh, couldn't hear there on a lot of these trucks. There's a lift pump 
in the fuel tank. Tore into this one just to find out that 96 doesn't have them. So uh, anyway, that's uh, I'm, I'm definitely on the downhill slide now. Uh, in all reality, I uh, well, except for not having water in it, I could start it up and drive it right now. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, as far as I know, there's no reason why the transmission, which may be low on fluid, I got fluid for it, but there's no reason why it shouldn't go ahead and run. Uh, oh, I got headlights to do yet, but I think uh, that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, once I figure out the system on it, I already have a junction here that comes from the the wires that were going out to all the locations. Uh, so I should be able to go off of it to run everything out here and troubleshoot it from there. One issue I you know, have to sort out is the switch itself. I had cut it. I wasn't planning on using it at first. So I had cut the wires on it and then realized that I probably shouldn't have done that because if I, for the dash lights and I didn't know blinkers, what else went through it, I have to go back and find all the wires and, that go to everything and hook it back up. Been working, I would say, it's been just over a month since we moved the cam over here and I've probably not got in a full week of work on it uh, or maybe maybe right at a week's worth. I had a whole list of stuff. Uh, let's see. On the video that was never, never played, I had made up this list. Okay, starting at top, we still need to do that. Two, we still need. Three, it's done. Four, remove running boards and mount running boards. Now I have to, uh, I still have to, <laughs> have to do those again. Uh, front fender supports, done. Clean up and paint firewall and support panel. That was this piece back in here. Got it done. Run cables to battery box. Have that done. In cab platform covers. Not sure I'm even going to mess with that one. That is for these right here. Not not a critical thing. Just something cosmetically. Andy might want to deal with in the late in the future. Uh, remove preheat tube from intake. That is done. Sourced in cape coupler. Did that. Uh, install mount. Did that. Okay, so that was a pretty good dent in it. But now, that, that wasn't everything, and I knew it wouldn't be. So we're going to go down here and add uh, headlights. Plum radiator. This is going to be a big one. And I need to come up with an air intake for the uh, turbo air filter. And you look at the wipers. And, and th these are some that Andy had said wasn't you know critical that we got it done. It's just something I'd like to get done. Uh, which those are probably 6 volt. So we'll have to see what it takes to get that to convert. The electric fan. I've got it wired up, but I don't have it. I don't have it wired to the. Uh, I need to do a rad fan. Do rad fan switches. I'm gonna have one switch on the dash. Oh, switches, and then the uh, thermostat controlled one. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna place it at yet. I don't like having them on the engine, just because when you shut them off, the engine heat. Can keep them going even though the water's not circulating anymore so i'd rather have it closer you know to the radiator but i'm not sure where i'd even tap in at oh another thing is uh the heater hose cap heater hoses oh, he's got seat covers to put on it okay so right there's eight nine ten eleven twelve actual 12 items still to do and i'm sure i'm forgetting something yeah in cap wiring is going to entail a lot of cleaning up in there too brake lights will include mounting mount tail lights so that's going to be yep. 
and all that shit actually wiring wise should be right I, I didn't mess with anything but going back there so but I don't know what it's going to take for see all these are still as they were feeding the, the back of it yeah I, I, I've uh, I've knocked out a lot still got a lot to do and uh, I was really hoping to have it done by the end of the month and the end of the month is almost here definitely can't wait to drive it Andy had me go ahead and pull the pull the drive out of it as far as I disconnected the transfer case linkage and pulled the front drive shaft out because he didn't want to worry about going in full drive with it and uh, actually I'll probably be glad that we did that when it comes to running those water lines it might be good that those are out that that's out of the way I'm not sure where I'm gonna run those at yet maybe over on this side uh, I just have to get underneath there and see where I got room that's what I got that pipe for I found that was, was mainly just so I could could stick it up in there and see I plan on having some exhaust pipe bent up for it and if I can can plan it out good enough to just give my exhaust guy a list of measurements and bends and angles and he can give me a piece of pipe back or a couple pieces on each side that I can just clamp together that would be awesome uh, I'm hoping the luminized pipe will uh, hold up to antifreeze now I have to redo these those need drilled out so those covers can go back on these on the sides like that uh, you know it's not a critical critical thing but it'll probably be an hour job doing it uh, I need to get all the wiring ran on the, the parking lights the headlights and the blinkers get all them ran up to the junction block and then I'll sort them out on the inside and make sure everything's going where it should uh, and I need to put he's got a historical plate to go right back there on the bumper when everything's said and done before we take it back out but that's how it's looking uh, last I heard he's still looking for some 20 inch rims aluminum wheels that will fit on this the eight lug he doesn't want to use adapters but he wants to run taller tires on it so so it doesn't look goofy like that <laughs> and uh so we'll see I, I just wanted to take a minute i'm not going to do a, a scripture at the end of this video um, i want to share an experience with y'all uh there's a, a local local to us is still a couple hours away but encounter ministries is has become a big part of, of our life in fact patty is volunteering slash working at uh, their campground on Lake of the Ozarks. I went down there some this summer uh, during my vacation, spent a week there helping out instead of here working on the truck. But, you know, it's something I, I enjoy doing. But anyway, Encounter Ministries puts on events uh, for men called Men's Encounter, for women called Ashes to Beauty. And then at the end of the year in November, I guess, they have I Still Do, which is for, for couples, for, for married couples. And just their way their approach is non-denominational but it's, it's uh, biblically based uh, and it's it's all based on testimony and and the strength in testimonies and sharing with with your fellow man and and just loving on each other and just just the freedom that comes from uh, confessing to one another and, and talking about your life and just doing life together. And they also, after you attend the men's encounter or the Ashes to Beauty, uh, they have local, uh, what they call post, that you can go attend weekly post meetings, which are kind of like a Bible study slash small group and it's just a way to continue keep the momentum going and i had the pleasure a couple weekends back to attend a man's encounter as a server you can go as an attendee or a server as an attendee you're just going there soaking it all in and but then as a server although you still soak a lot in you're there to to serve the attendees to to vol you're volunteering to to do work that helps an event like this work 
but at the same time you're there to pray with the attendees help them with things they're struggling with uh i had several guys uh that i prayed with for for, for various things and it's just uh, a real uh, amazing environment uh, over a thousand people attend uh, when they have these they have five men's events and four women's events throughout the summer I'll, i'm going to put a link down in the description uh, down below for, for everybody to check it out there's people i'm i'm located in the midwest they have a campground on lake of the ozarks but lebanon missouri is is actually where you would drive to to go to the events but there are people that come in from all over the country so it's just amazing. It's just spreading like crazy over a thousand people in attendance uh, with a breakdown. I think there's like out of a thousand people, maybe 700 attendees and 300, just over 300 servers. I'm not, not for sure what the, what the mix is exactly, but it's just an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, anybody who wants to, who's already walking with the Lord, you know, it, it's a good, good tune up refresher. The way I see it is it, it gives us the tools that sometimes sitting in a church every week doesn't give you. And I'm not knocking going to church. You know, if anything, it's made my attendance at church even more meaningful uh, because I felt more free and accepting of, of what was going on uh, and, and could connect better uh, with the word. A chance to en encounter Jesus and that's kind of their mission statement, I guess you'd say, is they created a safe space to for people to encounter the Lord. And, you know, miracles that's happened there, just amazing. People just transformed over the course of a weekend. People who have been harboring things their whole lives, learning to let it go. And, and the freedom that comes from forgiveness of others and forgiveness of yourself. And uh, it's just an amazing, amazing place. And I just encourage everybody to check it out. If you're new to church, if you've been going your whole life, if you feel like you've just been checking boxes and showing up, or if you've been studying the word and you just really want uh, an experience to take it to another level, I highly recommend it. So uh, go ahead and check that out. It's down in the uh, description down below. Uh, there's a link to their website. Uh, yes, Encounter Ministries, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Uh, check it out, and I'm going to wrap it up here. So uh, this is Glenn for GMP Custom Fabrications, living the dream till the freaking phone rings. Thanks for watching.